Welcome to the third video in TestRails training series. This time, we will show you how to create, manage, and organize your test cases inside of TestRails. Test cases are an essential aspect of product testing. A test case basically describes a single application functionality or requirement that testers need to verify. To begin with, let's go to one of our projects and select the Test Cases tab from the menu bar at the top. Many of the teams that use TestRail have hundreds or even thousands of test cases per project, which means that they need a way to group them together. TestRail allows the grouping of related cases by giving the option of adding test sections. Here, you can see the number of test sections and test cases you have in your current project. It is generally recommended to group test cases by application modules or functional areas, but how a team organizes their test cases really depends on the actual project. Please note that it is not recommended to group test cases based on product versions or testing types. Instead, grouping test cases by application modules or functional areas works best. As you can see, we have a list of test cases that are grouped into various sections. These are added by clicking the Add Section button. With TestRail, you can also add subsections, which can be useful to further organize your test cases within your project. TestRail is a very rich web application, and we've invested a lot of resources to develop an intuitive user interface that helps your team be more productive. For example, TestRail makes it easy to add new sections and reorganize test cases without the need to navigate to different pages. TestRail supports drag and drop on this page, so you can rearrange things easily. For instance, you can select a few cases and simply drag them to the new section with your mouse. Rearranging your sections in the sidebar can also be done in the same way. It is also possible to copy or move cases between projects or suites via the Copy and Move dialog. To do this, click the Copy Move icon in the toolbar, then select the Source project in the dropdown. From there, simply check the boxes of the test cases you'd like to copy or move, then confirm the action with the correct button at the bottom. Please note, we recommend copying rather than moving when using this option to prevent accidentally removing tests from active runs in the source project. Now let's have a look at a single test case. A test case has various attributes that describe it in the form of the available fields. The standard fields used in the default test steps template are title to give a clear name and description of the test case, section to determine which section within your project the case should be located, template to determine what field should be present in the test case, test type to define what manner of test you will be creating, priority, which is used to determine the importance of the individual test, estimate to allow you to define a general guideline for how long you think the test should take to execute, milestone, to link the test case to specific milestones for better planning, and finally, test steps and expected results, to define the process a tester will need to go through to execute the test and what should occur upon successful test completion. Adding attachments to the case or uploading images and screenshots to the text fields is also possible. You can also use rich text formatting within any text fields. This allows you to make words bold, include lists and links, and more. For this, TestRail uses a modified version of the formatting system called Markdown. For example, by adding two asterisk characters before and after a word, you can make it bold. You can find out more about how to use TestRail's Markdown options to modify your text according to your preferences and needs by clicking on the question mark icon to view the detailed page in our documentation. Another thing you can do with TestRail is configure test cases with individual test steps. TestRail supports either entering test steps and expected results for test cases via simple text fields, or you can configure TestRail to manage test steps separately in a more structured way. Separate test steps are already configured and available as part of our test case template feature. You can select the test case steps template for your test cases as indicated here. While using the separate steps template, you can define individual steps and expected results for each portion of the test and also record results for each step during execution. 
Now before ending this video, let's take a quick look at a few other useful pages when viewing your test cases. For starters, you can see all of the test runs and results associated with a test case at a glance by clicking on the Test and Results tab. There's also the Defects tab, which allows you to view any issues linked to test results for the test case from an integrated issue tracker. We'll get more into setting up and using defect tracker integrations in a later video. If you are interested in the history of a test case, such as changes that were made to a case and who made those changes, you can click on the History tab on the sidebar and see the full test case history with all revisions. TestRail Release 6.2 introduced fast track editing functionality. This enables you to edit the content of your tests without leaving the fast track view. Just click on the new edit button while viewing either the case or the test itself in the context of a run, then make any necessary changes before saving them. Fast track editing makes in-flight changes to your tests much easier and faster. It's not necessary to go all the way back into the test case in order to make the necessary changes while working in a test run. Many teams have test cases they already want to migrate to TestRail when starting to use the tool. To accommodate this, TestRail offers CSV and XML import options. You can find links to more information on how to import your test cases in the description. All right, that's all for our third training video. To learn how to run tests and record results, watch the fourth video in our series.